Okay. I sort these off by asking people what they do for a living. So Mickey, please tell the people what you do for a living. We all know, but humor me. I am a professional card player. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Cause I got you on Rodeo and you were kind of letting the people know in your McLaren, uh, you just kind of roll around in that puppy. I always thought as a kid that the most baller thing you can do is buy like a supercar and daily it. Yeah. So when I bought it, I, I picked the one I have specifically because it was like the highest model I can get while still providing the needs of a daily driver. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I'll take that thing grocery shopping. I'll take it through the in and out drive through. Yeah. I just think it's the most baller move. Well, people I take it off roading. Like, I've actually taken, took in that McLaren really? off road a couple times. It is good. It like performs. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't like get crazy. I don't wanna, like destroy it, but yeah. I mean, I feel like, um, the McLarens in general, people complain about like, um, Mechanical issues, but do you have any like issues no. with it? No, no. It's so funny, bro. Everybody says that. I've never had a single one. So you think it's like more of a talking point that people like chat about because it's like, oh, McLarens have issues and people just build off of it? The first thing is I've heard people say McLarens have issues more than I know people who own McLarens. Okay, yeah. So it's almost like they heard that and yeah. just regurgitate it. It's like a rumor. Okay. Yeah, like I own a McLaren and I've never had an no issue. issues. Okay, yeah. interesting because we are friends with Vehicle Virgins Parker, if you know him. He's mm -hmm. like an automotive YouTuber and he says the same thing. He's like, no. No issues, no problems. So yeah, you're probably right. So I kind of want to dive into the the whole you know gambling sphere here, uh -huh. and let's just kind of off the bat chat about how you got into gambling. What is your like big what, like what is the game that you played back in the day when you were in Vegas and like, like the backstory my, on yeah. on the whole saga? So I'll give you the short version. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I grew up in like a card playing environment. My whole neighborhood plays cards. My whole family plays cards. I come from a long line of high stakes gamblers. Okay. Um, the game that I played like at my peak of the gambling saga, like yeah, that's yeah. on the internet that everyone knows is Baccarat. Okay. And the reason I initially chose Baccarat as my, I guess you would say game of choice is because they let me bet $250,000 a hand hand per hand. Whoa. And the closest I can get in any other game was a six deck shoe of blackjack. I could play 75 K a hand. Whoa. And I play double deck anyway, where I'm only allowed 50 K a hand. So by just switching oh. games, I'm allowed to bet five X. Whoa. Where were you playing at? Like what's the best casino to play at? I don't want to say they're all bad and I don't want to promote any of them. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Is there, is there any worse casino? Some are worse than others. This is the thing. They all cheat in different ways. So some will, like, are you familiar with slots? Uh, yeah. Okay, so on slots, there's a range of what they're allowed to do for RTP, which is return to player, right? Okay. And the range, uh, I believe by law, is 92 to 98%. So some casinos say, we're going to still make money no matter what. Let's keep our customers happy. Let's put an RTP at 98%. So you're only losing 2%. Oh, well, other okay. casinos are saying we need money now. We just had a big expense or we're brand new or whatever it is. We need as much money now. Hmm. Let's crank it all the way to 92%. So now you're losing okay. 8%. That's the max, like the max. Uh, win. That, that, I believe yeah. that's the legal range in slot machines is 92 to 98. Okay. Gotcha. So, so, and, but the way they do that, like I just use that as an example, but all games in a casino have like similar, similar systematic usage. And that's like a law, like 92 to 98%. Yeah. Cause I think I'm sure there's a lot of greedy people out there that put it at 0% yeah. RTP if they could and just. Take regulated. every dollar you put in. Yeah, there is some regulation. Regulated, kind of. Yeah, yeah. But they all, you're saying like Vegas actually cheats. Like how do they cheat on like blackjack, for example? There's a lot of ways. Uh, there is the option of sleight of hand, which is such an interesting one because it's so rare. It takes a very special dealer. And mm. I already know like there's going to be people in the comments that go, I'm a dealer. I've never heard of someone using sleight of hand. Mm. And in my head, I'm like, yeah, I, I know you never did. You would never be in the position to be asked to do a sleight of hand oh, okay. move. You're not that kind of person. So only like, big ball or like big, big transactions, which makes sense. Yeah, there's very, they bring in like, they bring in like this heavy hitter dealer. They bring in a guy that knows what's happening. Magicians, He's in on basically, it. Like, basically, kind of. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Cause I guess if it's like, like a hundred K a hand, like yeah. one move like that. And that's like a hundred K, boom. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So you think that happens at a high level? Like often? I know, I know it does. You know, yeah. okay. Yeah. You've seen it. Yeah, I've, I've seen it. I've talked to dealers that have been involved. I've been in conversations regarding it. I've, okay. Yeah. So, okay. okay. So straight up, like you've been like, have you ever called it out and been like, yo, you just. 
No. Um, I think that the casinos know that I look for that. Okay. And so what I do when I play, mind you, I play double deck, also known as pitch, right? Pitch is a specific type of double deck. Mm -hmm. And what they do for pitch is they the dealer holds the entire deck in their hand, which makes card me which makes the ability to ha be a card mechanic easier because there's more. Now you have two hands yeah. versus a card mechanic who has to work with just the shoe with one hand, right? Okay. So when you're playing pitch, there's more chances for them to be a card mechanic. But again, it's super rare that this ever happens, but it does happen. When I'm getting dealt in pitch, I never look at anything except for the dealer's hand that's holding the deck because that's where it's going to happen. Okay. So I know that they know that I'm watching it. They see me staring at one thing and one thing only. I almost can care less what my cards are. To play the game blackjack is simple. You either mm -hmm. hit, stay, split, or double. It's like very simple. You don't got to yep. think about it too much, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm staring here the whole time with a slight glance down just to make sure, like, do I have to hit or stay? But the whole time I'm staring here. So I think they know that I would see them trying to do it. Would like the common person be distracted by like they're getting drinks or like they're yeah, of course. people are like trying to talk to them and you're yeah. just like yo like zoned in basically? Yeah, I play in a private room. I never let people around me. I don't like the distractions. I don't drink. The waitresses all know me personally. They know exactly what one and only non-alcoholic drink I do drink. Okay. So that they see when my drink's getting low, they bring it to me. They don't ask me for tips. At the end is when I tip all of it. Okay. So like I'm very focused and I keep my coach. I just call him a coach, but it's almost he's just my best friend. Call him an accountability buddy if you want. So between the two of us, we are watching everything, and we have no like outside distractions. We're trying to minimize all that nonsense. Oh, interesting. Okay, so and once you're at that level, like I know you probably got a bunch of kickbacks, right? Like, what are I think you mentioned like private jet whenever you want. Like, can you explain some yeah. of these like kickbacks that you got? Yeah, they've given me everything from uh, they furnished my penthouse here in LA. Oh, in LA. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not they, in Vegas, in LA. Yeah, in LA. They gave, it. Yeah, what they the gave fuck? me a 200 passenger jet. They gave me many other jets. They gave me like these crazy jumbo jets before. I took videos in them, like doing somersaults down the the hallway of the jet, like to the bedroom oh. and into the kitchen. Um, they gave me a Maybach. They gave me a Rolls Royce. Whenever you want to use, like yeah, like full time. They buy, like so you rented it, like basically, or it's like leased to you. They or? Ha so they have like well, they will go out and get something if I okay. request it. If you're just like fuck it, I want a Ferrari F8. Yeah, like, done, done. Oh, one time, uh, one time the Sands got me. So in Las Vegas, you ever been to the Motor Speedway? Yeah, yeah. So they have that, like, they have a full race team based in Vegas. I don't know if you knew that. Like, oh, I don't like follow the sport enough to no, like no. know the details. But yeah, so they have a full race team, and they're sponsored by Lamborghini. So oh. they gave me the Sands gave me the year priors, uh, a team Las Vegas Lamborghini race car. Whoa! They let me race it on the track. I crashed it. What? <laughs> yeah, on camera. And you're just like, they're just like, oh, you don't have to pay that back. It's just like, correct. Oops. Yeah, like, correct. Yeah. yeah. Damn, dude. They, they told me the only thing that they won't cover is if I get injured. Like, they're like, you can't sue yeah. us. And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not as litigious anyway. Okay. So, yeah. but in Vegas too, you have like your own like pimped out spot. Yeah. They gave me residencies in all the secret villas in Whoa. every flagship casino. Secret villa? Yeah. What is that? Like, there's a, so they have villas for like ballers that you yeah. can, if you want, you can pay for them. Like top, that, top level or like? Yeah, but okay. then they have a section of villas that you couldn't pay for. There's not a price for it. They're like invite only, Whoa. secret entrances, private okay. elevators. Like presidents or whatever. Yeah. Like I actually kings. stayed, I, I, have a, I have a photo of this. I used to stay in George W. Bush's old villa in, uh, in the Venetian. Whoa. I have a photo because he has a plaque on there with his name. I actually won $6.6 .6 million, $3 million in check, $3.3 .3 in cash. And I was with my best friend, my coach's son, who at the time was like 11 or 12. Whoa. And this cash we put on the wall was taller than him. And I was holding the check, and me and him took the photo together with the George Bush, Bush sign in his Whoa. villa. How, how do you get that money out? Like, if you win, like, hypothetically, like $10 million, like, mm -hmm. what, is the, um, what is the way that you move that? Like, do you have, like, bags with, like, armed drivers? Like, couldn't they, the kids, you know, maybe, like, set up, like, a situation where, like, you get robbed by, like, their people? Is that, like, a thing that happens? Um... All right, so there's the two questions that you asked. The first is, how do I move the money? Yeah. Um, there's a few things. Well, all of it was case by case. It depends on the time. Like, mm -hmm. if it's daytime, I'll take the cash and go straight to the closest bank in Vegas. Like, I'll just okay. bring it to the bank, you know? You just show up with that much money at a bank. Yeah, like, every yeah. bank has a private room in the back that they will unlock for okay. for whatever reason, you know, gotcha. privacy reasons. Especially in Vegas, I'm sure, assuming that would happen. Yeah. yeah. So I'll, like, come in with, like, duffel bags. And I'll, before we like get out of the car, me and security will go up to somebody at the branch, talk to the manager and say, hey, I just want to let you know I have X amount of million in cash. I need the back room. They'll open it. They'll let me in the back and then we're locked in there. And like, you're so safe in there. Okay. You might as well be in the vault, you know? Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Uh, there's other things. Like one time, bro, I, uh, I won the money in the middle of the night 
and uh, I had to stay in town. I do my best to just get out of town. Right, mm-hmm. it's my that's my like, my go to. Yeah. There was a particular time I won um, four and a half million. I got paid in all cash. You ever seen the video of me playing dominoes with four and a half million yes, cash? Yes. This is this is that trip. Okay. So I win the okay. four and a half million. <laughs> yeah. This is before I did the dominoes video. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I got I called all of my hosts at every casino and I said, Hey, can you give me a room just for the night? And I told each one of them that. So now if the if if someone tried to leak what room I was staying in, they would talk to 10 different casinos and they would never know which casino, which room I was in. Oh, so okay. I left nine of them empty, you know, or whatever it was. I left Whoa. all of them empty, but one of them I stayed in. The one that I stayed in, I put the money in this giant purple baby suitcase that was actually my casino host suitcase. Oh. And um, I slept with my arm wrapped through the railing. Like, like you know, oh, you like, lift it up to yeah. like tow it. And I slept with my arm wrapped through it until the morning. Dude, that's crazy because I feel like, yeah, like someone could fucking like paraglide into your fucking place, break the wind. I mean, yeah. I don't even fucking know. But you would have to hit all 10 hotels yeah. that I have a room at. That's like you know? some like Tom Cruise shit right there. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Dude, so you never gambled online. Like what, what is your opinion on online gambling? Is it a scam every time? Almost exclusively online gambling is a scam okay. except on Kirgo.com. And the okay. only reason I can say that is they're the only casino that has ever allowed me and actively does allow me full access to all of their information. The back end, the software, the RTP, okay. their, their, um, their P&Ls. I look at every single thing and they'll never stop me. I've asked for things that don't even matter just to know that they're willing to bend over backwards. Oh, wow. And anytime I've asked any other casino, where I talk to the online, the owners of every online casino in the world, they've offered me NBA money. So much money probably, yeah. Because yeah. I feel like if you say this is the good one, the whole it's world's like, gonna yeah. play on it. Yeah. Okay. That's so, interesting. And they won't let you in at all. None of them will let me look at what I want to look at. So if, there's, if there's like a live dealer cam, is it so easy for them to like just do their magic? Like it, it is, but it goes beyond that. So usually there's like a few companies that offer. They're like an independent contractor. They go, hey, we have like staff that are dealers. They'll deal on the stream to your casino. Okay. But on the back end, they can adjust software however they want. And they don't have that 92 to 98% regulation like they do in the States. So oh. they could do, you know, 0% RTP if they wanted yeah. to. Like slots seem like the easiest. Like that's yeah, the crazy. Easy, it seems the easiest because it's digital. Yeah. And I don't trust real casinos in America, let alone foreign casinos online. Yeah, yeah. I think all casinos are a scam except for Kirgo.com because they let me look at all of that stuff. Okay. Is there is there a best odds game? Like I know I know you can get kind of up to 50/50 on like craps, blackjack, some of them. Is is there like a, is there one that's the worst and one that's the best? The worst the average player. Like, the worst is okay. slots and the best for have for just call it like recreational knowledge is is baccarat. It's virtually 50/50. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And like roulette is just kind of like uh, what is that like forty? But it depends on the number of greens, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you want to play uh, European, which is one zero. Oh yeah, yeah. It's the least amount of greens. Now there's three at some casinos, which is crazy. Forty three percent. It's crazy. Like it's crazy. Like don't play. Don't play triple zero roulette. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, some like shitty casinos like Luxor and stuff like that have that. Because they like... need the money. Yeah. And the yeah. people that play at those casinos aren't smart enough people to know any better, right? Like yeah. those they're they're attacking middle middle class America there. Especially know? the slot people. I just see that they're just like hitting the button. Yeah. It's just crazy honestly. Yeah. Is there is there a max win that you have hit? Like what is your like overall in one session max win? My biggest single session win is eleven million five hundred twenty six thousand dollars. Okay. Oh yeah, you told me that in that video. That is crazy. Yeah. Do you have a max loss? Not max loss, but like what is your um, what is your worst loss basically? I mean, there's like a viral story about a time I lost eight million, but but like I ended up winning at the end of the whole session. So like, let me think of like a, a different time. Um. Oh yeah, I got one. Not that it's the most amount of money, but it was so brutal. I'm playing PLO. You know what PLO is? Uh, no. It's a version of poker. It's, okay. Imagine it's poker, right? Gotcha. And we do prop bets. So what a prop bet is is a side bet that has nothing to do with whether you win or lose. Like that poker hand. Okay. So it'll be like, I'll bet you half a million. That on the flop, which is the first three cards, two of them will be red. And someone will be like, I bet two of them will be black. All right, half a million says red oh, and black. Okay. Against the other players. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, and it's just like independent, unrelated to like, if you're, you could fold and still win that prop bet. Oh, okay. Just like random, just whatever. You yeah, can you can do hold and fold, right? A uh, fold and hold. So can like, you pick anything? Like, the, yeah. it'll be like six, seven, eight, or nine. You and can do any, anything you want. No, well. As okay. long as the other person, yeah, we're just people. We want to yeah. bet on it. We get, you know, who's going to stop okay. us? But you say that to like the dealer, like, we agree on this. And it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah, so I was playing, we call it Baccarat, and it's with the flop. So what it is, so, 
Do you know what a flop is? Uh, yeah, I'm not the biggest poker guy, but yeah. so the yeah. first three cards that come out, it's called the flop. Okay. And the way we play baccarat with that is both people, like me and you, who are betting, would share the middle card. Okay. And then I would pick first card, or, or, or second, or you would pick second card, for example, or I'd pick second and you pick first, and then sharing in that middle card, which one of us would win if that was a baccarat hand, right? So okay. if you do you know how to play baccarat? Uh, no, Imagine, I'm just a blackjack guy myself, but ba- uh, I want to get into it. Yeah, basically closest to nine wins, right? So okay. like whatever. So if the if I pick first and you pick second and we share the middle and it goes nine king seven. You have a total of seven. I have a total of nine. I would win that baccarat hand on a on a poker flop. Okay. So I remember I, I was uh, I was I was hosting and we we're playing and me and my buddy were we we're waiting for a new table to start. So me and him were like, "Yo, let's just play baccarat flops together." And we started small just to kill time, like twenty k a flop, like okay. whatever, just killing time. And he was and he won all of them. And I'm like, I'm like down, like I don't know, like a hundred or 150,000 or something. And I go, "This is so stupid. We're just waiting for the game to start." I go, "All right, play me one more 150,000." He goes, "All right, no problem." We do it again, Baccarat flop, and he wins that. So now I'm down like 300,000. I'm, I'm like, all right, play me again, 300,000. He's like, all right, whatever. You know, we play again. I lost it again, and what? he scooped me. Damn. So then the game starts, and we start playing poker, and I'm down like 600K or something just in the prop bets to my buddy. Jeez. So the game starts going, and he, we played at two tables next to each other. Every like 10 minutes, he'd walk over to my table, and he goes, half a million on the next one. I'll pick first or I pick second. And I go, all right, I agree. And he won every single one. What? I think it was something like two million bucks I lost in the prop bets. Damn, just in prop bets. Yeah. Dude, yeah. that is crazy. Yeah. So, and you gamble for celebrities, right? Yeah. Once once you got banned, you, you said you're banned from like pretty much every casino in the world, right? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's it, nuts. It's, it's hard to have an exact figure because a lot of them I haven't been to. So how do I know that I'm banned before I go? But yeah. my experience says almost every time I walk into a new casino, they told me I'm not And they allowed. just immediately like, are just like, yeah. Yo, get out of here. Yeah. How does that happen when they ban you? They just bring you like, like, hey, you are banned. Like the um, person comes out. Nah, they all, well, they do it differently, especially in the beginning. Yeah. Now, more so, what happens is uh, security will come. Usually, they know who I am, and they go, "Hey, Mick, like, don't mean to disturb you, but I have to trespass you from here. Okay. I have to walk you to your car." And before we walk out of the door, they pull out like a little index card and they read me my like Miranda rights, to, just to oh. legalize the trespassing. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. That way, if I do come back, I am subject to arrest. Okay, so so you then switch to gambling first. I saw you gamble with Suicide Boys, right? I love that. <laughs> Those one. are my. Those are my dogs. Dude, bro, I that's just, my number one artist on Spotify every yeah, single year. I yeah, fucking yeah, love yeah. Suicide Boy. I yeah, listen yeah. forever. So, you, so they just hit you up or you hit them up and you're like, can I just fucking yell for you? And they're like, fuck it. Um, the whole story is that Mike Malak oh, put me man. in a group chat with DJ Scheme. DJ Scheme was DJing for Ski Master Slump God on tour with the Suicide Boys. Oh, so I went from like one group chat immediately to the next to the next and then all of them were like, "Bro, we're coming to Vegas. Please come 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 to the show with us." Oh, and I'm like, "Yo, so I'm your sick, Yeah, I'm like, "Yo, I'm your biggest fan." Like, you, so you love Suicide Boys too. I love the Suicide. Dude, I, that was was that not the last song we listened to when we pulled in? Dude, yeah. I'm bumping their like other hardcore shit. I don't yeah. like their like uh I call it like kind of sad boy music. Yeah. I'm into like their fucking like killing music basically. <laughs> So, yeah, I could ask them what they do for a living. That'd be funny. They'd be like, fuck, we just, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, though. Yeah. So then they're just like, fuck it, like play for me. Like, how does that work? Can you be in the casino playing for them? Yeah, so uh, first we did their show, and I had a blast. I was like on stage. It was really, really oh, cool. It's so sick. It was so yeah. sick for me as such a yeah. fan. It's dope. And yeah, and they sold out this, you know, they're on like a stadium tour, and they're selling yeah. out all the stadiums. They're and so I'm, big now. they popped off. Bro, yeah. it's crazy. And they don't do like entourage and posses. They don't do that. They're like, they're like two dudes like, bro. Ruby has a tattoo on his forehead that says no photos. You know what uh, I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like they're not about all that clout and whatever. Yeah. And it's really cool. And they're, they're just dope dudes. Dope human beings, bro. Okay. So before I even went on, before they even went on stage and performed, Scrim has me come into his tour bus, right? So this is the very first time I'm meeting him. So I go on the tour bus and immediately he goes, hey, bro, I heard, you know, a certain thing about you. And, and he like said it. It's a little bit private in my life. And I go, yeah, how'd you know? And he goes, me too. And I go, no way. No, okay. And just like that, like whatever commotion was happening, like ceased to exist. And it's just like me and him just locking in and just talking oh, like cool. regular people. And I'm like, no vlog cameras, no stupid I, shit. Like nah, that. bro. It was just us just hanging out on the tour bus. And it was really, really cool. And then, um, and then, okay. So then we get blah, blah, blah. We're hanging out. Everyone's vibing. Everyone's chill. And then, uh, someone, his manager, whatever was like, yo, time to perform. He's like, all right, man, come on. I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm following him and Ruby on to go backstage from the tour bus right onto the stage. And he like stops and he like, is like, yo, I'll be right back. And he just like walks away. Right. And everyone's like, yo, we got to go on stage. We got to go on stage. And the manager came to me and he goes, he goes, yo, like, I think we're going to call off the show. 
And oh, I'm like, what? And he goes, yeah, um, Scrim's having like, you know, like a, an issue or a concern or a thought or whatever. And, and I don't, he doesn't want to perform. I go, whoa, that's crazy, right? Well, yeah. And then I walk back to the hallway that he was in and I was like, hey, yo, bro, I just want to let you know, like anything you do right now, these people look at you as like a God and you can do no wrong in their eyes. If you got up there and said, hey guys, I don't feel good. I'm just going to sit here and not even sing. They would still respect you and love you. And I... And then like a minute goes by and he goes, all right, let's go on stage. And then, yeah. And then after the show, his manager said, I'm the one that saved the show. And I was Whoa. like, bro, I hardly even said anything. That's and sick. It was really cool. And since then, me and I've been locked in. Dude, that's dope. Bro. Yeah. Dude, that, yeah. I'm not jealous. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. so cool. Hey, if you guys are ever kicking it, you know, yeah. bring my line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other celebrities you have gambled for? Like, like all you name them, everybody, everyone from Lil Baby to Odell Beckham to, uh, uh, to see to rod wave to uh, what's the best win you've gotten for for like a, a celebrity i had a really fun one with fora and rod wave okay i had a few fun ones with yk osiris kind of just because he's a riot okay i'm trying to think like the biggest dollar amount where someone's just like, you fucking, you're a legend. You fucking. Little baby was was like he was the most hyped. Yeah. Okay, is he yeah, a dope he, guy too? Really cool guy. Oh, yeah, fuck yeah. yeah, he's like a funny guy, bro. Like, uh. I don't know how to explain it. Like, he like moves around like he's not famous. Oh, cool. Okay. And it's kind of cool. Yeah, that's dope. So he's like humble, dude. I think so. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, and do you ever lose? If you tell them prior, you're like, I could lose this. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they get it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But no. these, you know, these guys are like this. This is the whole thing with them. They go, we're going to gamble no matter what. Mm-hmm. We're almost guaranteed to lose. Yeah. At the very least, you might a little bit help. So, like, nothing could be worse anyway. So, like, why not bring you for a little bit of insurance? I'm yeah. Like, I'm like, all right, whatever. It's just fun. So, yeah. so, you're not on the table, but you can stand by them and be like, do this, do that. That's allowed. It changed over time. Uh, so, it used to be before I was fully banned everywhere that they would just give me money. Sometimes they wouldn't even be there. They would just, like, send me a wire. Oh, and okay. be like, let me know what we want. And I'll just go and play. Sometimes they'd be with me and they'd oh. hand me the cash. I'd buy in and play. Before you were band banned. Like, yeah. And then right. slowly it changed. So I used to have politics with the casinos where I'd call and I'd be like, hey, these are the people that I'm with. This is how much money we have. This is what we're looking to do. And they would tell me, you can touch the chips. You can place the bets. They would say, you can't place the bets, but you can sit at the table and give advice. Sometimes they'd say, you can't sit at the table. You can stand behind them and talk to them. Sometimes they'd say, you can okay. sit down, but you can't say anything. So like every time was case by case until it just got too difficult. Oh, gotcha. And there's yeah. like you're you're winning too much basically. Yeah, yeah. So the common person that goes to Vegas though, like they're pretty much like, they're pretty much like kind of guaranteed to lose if they play for a long enough time. Like what, what's like yeah. your opinion on that? Yeah, once you hit uh, hour number four, you're almost almost destined for failure. So do you think the best method is to go in there if you're gonna like Dana White? I've gambled with him before and like yeah. I've seen it like he'll literally do like these mega bets, but like in these out. Is that, exactly, is that exactly how I play. It's called short play. It's exactly what I do. And they don't like that, right? Hate you know. it because they know that they, it's harder for them to win. So you can just go in there and just on one hand be like 250k or whatever, and that's kind of, is that why they like limit the max basically? Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, they limit the max to prevent uh, somebody with infinite bankroll oh. from Martin Galling. You know Martin Galling? Oh, is that when you do double your? You half, double half your bet. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it crazy though? I was reading the stats on that because it's happened to me. Like. The odds of in like 200 hands, for example, of getting like eight or seven in a row is like more likely than not, right? Yeah, I uh, I know that the Martingale is a losing theory. Yeah. Uh, it's a losing strategy. I've gotten fucked on it myself. Me yeah. too. Yeah. So I had, uh, my betting limits were 250,000 and I started with a $1,000 bet. I lost every single one because I wasn't playing to play. I was just playing purely on the bets, right? So I would, it didn't, to my head, I didn't even look at the board. I didn't think about nothing. I just like placed a bet with my eyes closed. Whatever that bet was, player or banker. I think it was player because I didn't want to pay commission. So I put a thousand on player and I just kept betting no matter what. And I lost enough that not only did it surpass the 250 mark, the $250,000 oh. mark. It's like, it was like 250 and some change or 260,000. It's like an odd number. Okay. But I'm, imagine this. Not only am I in at that point. I don't, I don't, I have no idea. I'm gonna guess and say like two million dollars chasing it because I yeah. lost a thousand, then I lost two thousand, which is three, then I have to bet a four thousand, yeah. which is now seven thousand. Now I have to bet, you know, yeah. what, you know, and all of a sudden you're in like two million dollars chasing one thousand dollars. Yeah. And even your last bet when you cap out at two hundred fifty thousand, you're now risking two hundred fifty thousand dollars to make one thousand. And no businessman in the world is gonna tell you that's a good idea. Yeah, that makes sense actually because you could have some king that shows up and like he'll get his money back eventually. Yeah. So if there was yeah. no limit and the guy has billions of dollars. He'll yeah. just bet a million, lose bet two million until he's betting, you know, five billion dollars a hand. But if he has the money, he has the money, and eventually yeah. he's gonna win. And he can just do that forever. Yeah, I know? guess casino unlimited money. 
play or limited money. It's just yeah. a guarantee. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, I feel like the common person, yeah, they show up to Vegas like $200 and they're just like, fuck it. And then, yeah, it's just like, I think you just got to show up to have fun basically. And like exactly. set a cap, right? Exactly. Cause I find like, I, I love playing like blackjack. I just think it's fun. I go in there and I'm like, hey, if I lose a thousand bucks, like it's totally worth it. It's like entertainment basically for yeah. me. But I feel like trying to chase that loss is, is bad. And I wanted to ask too, like, as far as like people that give, like they have their own little methods and whatnot. Like say you're playing blackjack and like they're feeling the cards. Like, do you think that's all like complete bullshit when yeah. people are like, they're staying on a 16, for example. Yeah. And they have their own little like theory on how to do it. Like, do you just play by the book? Um, I, I slightly adjusted the book in the way that I prefer to play. I play super aggressively. Okay. So I try to capitalize on some weaker spots that the book says not to, but okay. I, but I also short play. So I need to win as fast as possible, you know? So that's why I play like uber aggressively. How, how does someone become, like, it makes sense for poker, but I'm confused on how someone is a professional blackjack player. Like, how does that usually, like make you, sense? Yeah. You, uh, uh, usually they're uh, card counters when it comes to like, a professional blackjack player. Yeah, yeah. But this is like a fun fact that most people don't realize. There's so many professional gamblers out there, and what they're doing it's not that they're gambling for a win for a living. They're finding weaknesses in different versions of gambling for a living. Okay. They're finding like loopholes and weaknesses and exploiting certain features and things like that. So okay. like professional gamblers, there's a huge community of us. We don't care what the game is or like where it is, stuff like that. They're like, is there a weakness that can be exploited? You know, okay. and that's what we look for. Okay, interesting. That makes sense. Yeah, and I feel like there's so many that do it that like people are bound to be like lucky, you know, mm -hmm. in doing it. And then like they're the big professional, like it, for blackjack, for example. Mm -hmm. I know like poker is obviously a lot more skill uh, skill involved, obviously because you're playing against other people. But yeah, yeah. So, and I want to ask too about Shaken Hearts Foundation. That's your oh, yeah. that is your foundation that you started, right? Can yeah. You kind of like get into that, and it's like. A gambling addiction, like what, what do you help out with there? Yeah, for sure. So um, about a year and a half, maybe two years ago now, uh, I started a foundation called Shaken Hearts and you can just message it on Instagram. It's at Shaken Hearts cool. and totally for free, zero cost. If you struggle with gambling addiction, drug addiction, alcoholism, or mental health, like depression, anxiety, totally for free, we'll find you the best help in your region. Wow, for free. Yeah. Do you have volunteers or? Yeah, tons paid? of volunteers. Oh, cool. uh, so, okay. It started, it's kind of a cool story. So I don't drink, I don't drug, I don't curse, I don't eat sugar, I don't drink caffeine, I don't go to strip clubs, I don't oh, wow. make transactions for sex, I don't eat pork, I don't eat fast food. There's like a lot of things I Whoa, cut out. Oh, okay, wow. Yeah, yeah. Damn, that's good. are you vegan? No, I'm not vegan. Okay, okay. No, no, but no, no. but everything else is like, whoa, that's crazy. Yeah. Did you did you drink or do drugs or anything previously? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've tried it all. I, wanted, I always wanted to experience the most that life has to offer on this earth, so I've tried everything. Okay. The only thing I still basically do is vape, but... You know, so be it. Yeah, that's the one vice that I think you're fucking good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not chain smoking cigarettes either. But yeah, yeah I feel like, dr I feel like drinking's probably got to be the worst one. I mean, unless you're doing like fucking like heroin and stuff like that. But like, I think drinking a lot of times could be worse than heroin because yeah, drinking is so easily accessible. It's legal. And it's encouraged. Like there's alcohol commercials. And like yeah. when you go like to, even to a casino, they give you free liquor. They ain't no walking around. No one's walking around giving you free heroin. You know? Yeah, yeah. But, it's like a drug that I feel like people don't. They people, a lot of people don't even know it's like a drug. Which is interesting because yeah. I, like, I guess if you like look into it, but it like it's like the most like damaging drug out there. I feel like for like liver, you know, and then the decisions you make on it, yeah. the money you could lose while you're yeah. gambling. Yeah. So you would advise that if you, if you are going to go to Vegas, if you're just playing with a little bit of money, like do you do you think like staying away from alcohol is a good thing, or if you're just playing with some for fun, like think it's I don't whatever. think anybody should gamble, and if they're gonna gamble, they should only gamble with the amount that they would have been willing to spend on that night of entertainment. Okay, gotcha. And if they're doing it for entertainment, then go ahead, live your life, you know? And if yeah. you happen to get lucky and win sometimes, like, cool. It's like a cherry on top. Fun, yeah. yeah. Getting paid to have fun. But, like, yeah. so you you recommend no one, everyone to kind of stay away from it, unless you're doing it for fun. Kind of. Yeah, just, if you're going to do it, do it for fun. But know okay. that you're probably going to lose. Yeah. yeah. So would so would you say, like, you are the anomaly for, for the most part in getting not just, I mean, obviously, I know it's not just luck, but you, like, kind of made it out making a lot of money. Correct. Gambling. But, mo like... You're the anomaly there. Yeah, I would say it's very, very rare for someone to be a lifetime winner. Okay. And I know, like, um, we were looking at, like, net worth stuff like that. And you don't have to give me an exact number. But, like, on Google, it says you're around, like, 8 million. Would you say that's uh, a low number or a high number? I would say that if just in one session alone, I won 11.5 million. 
just on one session. I don't know how my net worth could be eight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the, the net worth stuff online is always uh, wrong, but yeah. I just wanted to. Learn. There's another one um, where it says I'm worth 42 million. Oh, okay. but, but honestly, I don't know how they come up with this stuff. I think it's just like clickbait article kind yeah, of stuff. Someone just like makes it. Like up. I have, I have some for me that are like fucking way off and like stuff like that too. So, so what are you worth? Daniel Mac? Ah, uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, just like you, I can't, I can't say <laughs> we do good. We do good for ourselves. So maybe we're in the same boat there. Do you, do you have a, I think we've chatted a lot about the, the Vegas stuff, which I think is super interesting with cars. You know, like I kind of do a lot of car related stuff. Do you have any like dream car that you're trying to get? And do you have a garage other than the McLaren or is that? Um... I, yeah, I have a Maybach truck and a G wagon. Oh, cool. Uh, I had a 488 in Miami. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. It's a fun car to have in Miami. Yeah. I've, I've ripped around on that. They're going from the bridge to the, you know, in Bristol yeah. area. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's fucking fun. I had, um, probably my favorite car I ever owned as odd as this is going to sound was my Audi a seven. Oh, okay. That was probably my favorite car. It was like one of my first like luxury vehicles, mm -hmm. you know, when I was coming up in life and, um, I wrapped it in matte white whims rims were matte white. Cool. The calipers were neon green. I did uh, neon yellow headlights and I found a way myself to customize the taillights to be fully, uh, they worked perfectly and they were also matte white. Oh, cool. And I had like this, the darkest tints. This is too dark. You couldn't even see it at night. Oh. And the, just the peanut butter leather and it was just such an awesome vehicle. Dude, the white wheels, bro. I got them on mine too and like I think it's the fucking move. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on the, cool. obviously the, what you do but yeah, I, I made mine like, it's like a pink and it's the pink pig livery which is like a old classic Porsche livery and gotcha. yeah, people got their, uh, their opinions on white wheels, I feel like it's like normally the move. I yeah. think it's sick. it's like stands out. I feel like black wheels like everyone's got black. It's like why it doesn't really pop on anything. Like if you do all black, like I get it. Like that's yeah. cool. Like all matte, but like, like murdered out. Like I think it's cool, but everyone does that. Yeah, yeah. So I did the opposite. I just did um, stormtrooper everything. All white. That's yeah. clean, dude. Yeah, yeah, that's sick. Any nope. anything you're trying? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, what I want to get is what yeah. you about to ask. Yeah, 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 about yeah. to say. Yes, I yes. really like the Kona eggs. Okay, a lot. So what like a Regera, a Gera? Honestly, I don't even care. I just, I yeah. just think the whole any Koenigsegg I've ever test dri driven, every single time I'm just like, go squadron. Yeah, bro. yeah. I was like, I think this yeah. is just it. And they're like, I don't see them. Like, I'll see. I just swear to God, Bugatti Chirons grow on trees. Like, kind of in LA. Like, I see them, and there's only like 500 or so. But I swear to God, I've seen like a thousand yeah. Koenigseggs though. They're not showing up to car shows. Like, they're like, if you see that driving on road, I've never seen one on Rodeo. Yeah, I've seen Chirons on Rodeo. So yeah, I feel like it's like very like it's another level, and I've, I've yeah. interacted with uh, Mr. Konezeg himself. I got him just in like the new CCX, you know the CCX is like the manual and automatic one, mm. um, and yeah, it, basically his son who looks just like him, like he's like bald and like short. He goes, I'm like, there's like 40 people swarming him because Monterey Car Week's like this like big. Have you been there? Mm. It's like a, the car mecca basically, gotcha. like worldwide, where they like unveil new cars, and Mr. Konezeg standing there, and I'm like. Fuck, there's no way I'm gonna be able to get to him. And his son sees me, he's like, Dad, Dad. I was like, Fuck yeah. And his dad's oh. like, Dad, get over here, film this video. And I was like, Oh, okay, cool. I got him in a video. And, That's uh, sick. Boom, yeah. So that was clutch. That was clutch. <coughs> That's sick. Yeah. How'd you get into this car thing? Dude, like literally randomly, I was in Dallas. I just moved from uh, Arizona when I graduated college. I'd go out there and uh, never saw Ferraris in my life. Like, I grew up in Tucson, which is, mm. you know, right? There's fucking no Ferraris going around there. And I was like, What does that guy do? Like, I was just like wondering, like, what does that guy do? Like, how do I have a Ferrari one day? So I was like, why don't I just film it? And I had zero followers on TikTok. I post one video, it gets like 50 million views. My first video. I was like, oh, wow. fuck. And then I just post another one, 50 million views. And I was like, okay. And I just kept doing it. And I've been doing it for like four years, asking people what they do for a living. Like I thought it would be so dead by now, but I think it's interesting because every time it's a new, new kind of interaction. Also, I do it with like celebrities and like people that are interesting, like yourself, mm -hmm. you know, catching you on Rodeo. Yeah. And yeah, it's just like super random, but like LA is the, po the spot to do it for sure. Would you say that you're a car fanatic now? Are you in? Oh the yeah, culture? of course. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. So, all, all I do is think about cars. Yeah. Gotcha. So you, so you, so now it's like organic to who you really are. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like at the yeah. beginning I was more fascinated with, cause I had a finance background. That's what I was doing prior. It was more like how does this person afford the car and the car is the vehicle, no pun intended for like what showing wealth. Yeah. Um, and now I'm like, okay, I fucking love cars. And also I'm interested in how people make money. Gotcha. So it's interesting. The yeah. making money part is the most interesting part. Yeah. And it's such a, like you, it's such a good like vehicle. Like you're saying, it's such a good mechanic to see them in these cars because it's giving validity to the fact that this is someone who I really would have interest in learning how he made this money. Yeah. Or yeah. she, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I feel like it's interesting because a lot of the times people will bullshit me. Like they've seen the videos. Like at the beginning it was way easier to get like genuine, like people that were like, yo, like this is, um, this is what I do. Like, why are you asking me this question? What's going on? And now it's like, 
a lot of people will have seen the videos, so they're like, I'm a porn star or whatever. And some of them are like, I do get legit yeah. porn stars, but, um, but like a lot of the times it's just kind of bullshit, but sometimes people will give me like legit good advice. And like where we caught you on Rodeo, like we literally will chill out there for like 12, like this weekend, Saturday, Sunday, we'll be out there for like 10 hours on Rodeo, just fucking sitting there waiting for people. And like, it's the best spot. Cause you get like all the craziest answers. You get people that are legit people that are fucking with you. Like, People are smoking weed fucking while driving. I'm like, whoa, what the fuck? Like, it's just nuts, honestly, in L.A. You ever get the guy on Rodeo? He's got the yellow uh, the yellow Phantom. He, he must own the store on Rodeo. Oh, uh, Bijon. Um, Is that what it's called? Uh, I was going to do a video with him. He must own, The guy who owns the car owns the store. Yeah, yeah. So I'd, I'd love to know about the financial kind of side of your life. Like, are you investing? Um, do you consider yourself to be, like, financially savvy? Real estate stocks? All that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, I would say so. I I could almost be a CPA. I'm really good at taxes. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I'm really good at taxes. I'm not sure why. I think it's because it's mostly just numbers. Yeah. And numbers have comfort to me. Um, You're a numbers guy. Yeah, I mean, numbers are the same in every language. They don't change. They're not left up to interpretation. So, like, a number is going to be the same number no matter what it applies to. Okay. Um. Am I uh, like financially savvy? I would say my financial literacy is, I'm sure, you know, far above average, but I only know what I know because people who know more than me have taught me. Okay. Right? And I think the same way, like anybody can learn. Anybody, you know whose financial literacy is off the charts? Who? Waka Flocka. Oh, really? Yeah. So he and I are really oh, close. Shit. Okay. And the first time we ever met was uh, in the... Um, in the green room, uh, backstage at one of his show, at one of his shows, oh, DJ okay. Who Kid brought me back there because he knew how big of a fan I was. Oh wow! So he brings me back there. I'm like, Yo, Flacco, it's really nice to meet you, bro. And he goes, Thanks. And I go, I just want to let you know, as much as I love your music, I love your 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 financial literacy more. And oh. there was like a full blown party in this changing room. And again, we just like kind of locked in and went over it. Oh. And I and he's like he's like, Give me examples. He almost like like tried to like G check me. He goes, Oh yeah, like like what is it that I said that really got you, you know? Oh, okay. And I, and I like spit it back. Because I take a lot of the things he says that I've seen um, him say publicly, and I'll send it to some of my accountants. And I go, hey, can we look into this? This sounds interesting. Yeah. And we'll look into it. And we've applied some of those things in the past. Oh, whoa. Okay. So, yeah. So, I'm regularly forwarding, like, his um, his information to, like, my, my guys, oh, whoa. my team. And um, so, I knew it all. So, like, when he asked me, I had the answers. And he showed me, like, things I haven't seen yet. Oh, and wow. I was like, bro, we got to... We got to talk about this. I have a funny Waka story. I was yeah. in college at University of Arizona, and uh, he was walking into a fraternity to play, a, like, a frat show. And I have my camera out. He walked through, like, the back door. And I was trying to, like, sneak into this party, basically. Yeah. Uh, so we were, like, kind of, like, scoping out the, the back area. Me and my friends, like, fucking, we were, like, 19. Uh, and I film him by accident with Flash, right, as he's going in <laughs> in the back area. He turns around and goes, fuck you. <laughs> it's so funny, honestly. And then I hit him up since like a, two years ago and was like, yo, can I ask what you do for a living? And he was like, oh, sure. <laughs> Bro. So I probably won't tell him that story. Actually, I probably will. It's pretty funny. But... He's, he's such a solid and he loves playing paintball. Oh, paintball. Yeah. Really? I play paintball too. So we talk about paintball. all the time. I want to yeah. play paintball with you, bro. Yeah, we can play. I'm going to, I'm practicing on us. Like pro? Like fucking. Yeah. You're yeah. like fucking, you know. Yeah. You seen yeah. those videos on TikTok where they're like pouring yeah. out the fucking thing? That's me, bro. It's, I play pro, yeah. Oh, fuck. Well, I, okay. Technically, I play D2, but to someone who doesn't know the details. Oh, you'd fuck me up. You just, I'm just a casual fucking peasant yeah. out there. But we can still have fun. I have practice. I have team practice on Sunday, but you can just come down. Oh, so you're like legit, like doing it often. Yeah. Like I have to fly to Texas in like three weeks or something for an event. Oh, yeah. whoa. I played World Cup in November, yeah. That's so sick. I got like full on tournaments, like straight yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's sick. Like 10,000 people. Like, what? But we play five versus fives. There's just so many teams. There's like 600 teams at the last event I went to. There was an, uh, there was an event here in LA last weekend, but I couldn't. I just couldn't make it. Is there like uh, any like uh, Hunger Games style where it's like all thousands of people and like basically last man standing wins? Yes, but those aren't the ones that I play. I play speedball, like X ball, air ball, you know, like where they oh. fill the bunkers up with air and it's just oh. five versus five, like okay, okay. high impact, high speed, high, you know. Oh, gotcha. Okay. I had one other question too. I want to ask you yeah. more specifically about counting cards. Um, is, is that like a thing that casinos are actually like looking out for still? Yeah, for sure. And like, they, they are just like, we'll be like, yo, you're, you're out. So if you get caught counting cards, if you count cards, you're almost definitely gonna get caught. Okay. They have trained top card counters in surveillance looking for other card counters. Okay. The casinos hire card counters. They're like, like, like cause I know I watched 21. Like obviously everyone's seen that movie yeah. that likes to gamble and like, it, like, are they watching to see if you have, like, people that are around, like, you know, like, making, like, signals? Nah, most card counters don't do that. That's just, like, more yeah. of a movie trope kind of? Yeah. 
I mean, there's like a two, there's a there's there's a two man card counting system okay. that I would say if you're gonna be more than one person, that's all you need. Um, it's really just someone to like help you, basically, like one support. To have okay. like a ten man team to count cards for one hand is like a little excessive and unnecessary. Okay. Um, it just gives you an edge too. It's not. I feel like a lot of people think like counting cards, wizard. Like it, like it gives you a small edge. It gives. Small edge, right? So you go from being um, negative EV one and a half percent to being positive EV four percent. So oh, it's whoa. like a five and a half percent increase. But a four percent is huge. Oh, you're up on the house by four percent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. So that's fucking massive. You it's massive. Play like enough hands. Yeah, of course. Over the long haul, yeah. because you still have losing sessions as a card count. Yeah, totally. Yeah. You're still gambling at the core of all of it. So yeah. there's so much variance and things that can happen. That's so interesting. Okay. So they are like actively still kind of like monitoring for that. Yeah, for sure. For at sure. all times. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Well, thank you, bro. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the outro right there. Legendary, bro. Yeah. All right, cool.